Ha <laughs> ha It's that magical time of year again. But who knew that the best present you least expected was a special end of the year Tech News Roundup episode? That's right. We're taking a look back at TechLink's biggest tech stories of the year and then looking to the future to see what technological and meme-worthy delights 2020 will bring. So put on the old 8K Yule log. Yeah. Yeah. Grab a cozy blanket and mug of hot cocoa because it's the 2019 Christmas special. But first I have to get rid of this. Oh, you saw the movie? Yep. You, uh, you like it? <laughs> nope. Look, the holidays are all about happiness, hope, and hot cocoa. But I'll tell you who's probably not having the best time this year. Guesses? Ah. Uh, that... Wrong, Intel. <laughs> Because in 2019, AMD challenged Intel to a match of fisticuffs that didn't turn out so good for Team Blue. After being the less powerful, cheaper underdog for years, AMD Ryzen and Threadripper processors are starting to look like the no-brainer choice for not just multi-threaded applications like Creative Stuff, but also for gaming. While Intel started the year off strong with a 28-core high-end desktop part, more speculative execution vulnerabilities like Spoiler and MDS kind of pulled the wind up from their sails. I could have said spoiled it there. They pulled it right out. Whee! Give me that wind. Then AMD launched third gen Ryzen, led by the excellent 16 core 3950X, forcing Intel to launch their 18 core Core i9 10980XE at 999 US. James, that was half the price of its predecessor. You wow. knew that. Competition. Which didn't even do much for it because it was more or less on par with the 3950X, which is 150 bucks less. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> AMD also launched new Epic CPUs that were also awesome, followed by the launch of the high-end desktop Threadripper 3960X and 3970X, which solidified Team Red's new position of dominance. So far, Intel's only real defense has been to slash its prices and move its launch embargoes to six hours before AMD's. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention that Intel's desktop chips are still stuck on the 14 nanometer process, and they don't have the PCIe 4.0 support added in AMD's new chipsets. Look, I could go on, but that's just not in the spirit of the season. Let's just hope Intel pulls it together a bit in 2020, because Dr. Lisa Sue seems fine when she's the underdog. I do not want to see her become her uncle Jensen. I mean, Jensen, he's, he's actually not her uncle. They're related, though. They're like second cousins once removed or something. Yeah, so are we. But they're family. And that's what Christmas is all about. Next up, it's the US-China trade war that Huawei found themselves smack dab in the middle of. A story about a war, but it's Christmas, James. Chris there's a Christmas war movie, isn't there? The, the, the Christmas war. Wonderful life or something? Kringle versus the elves. Die hard. Die hard. Oh, you thank you, Edsel. Merry Christmas, Edsel. <laughs> So Huawei has been suspected of sketchy, spy-ish behavior for years, but last December, things came to a head when the daughter of Huawei's CEO, who was also the company's CFO, Meng Wanzhou, was arrested here in Vancouver at the request of US authorities. In February, a Huawei lab was raided by the FBI on suspicion of stealing trade secrets. Then evidence surfaced that indicated the company had incentivized its employees to steal Apple parts and clone them. And after that, a series of reports emerged about Huawei having back doors in their network equipment. And get out of there. <laughs> get out of there, guys! And even though the evidence was flimsy at best, a number of countries started banning Huawei equipment from the rollout of 5G networks. But not the UK! They still wanted to give Huawei a chance. <laughs> and data. <laughs> and, and their data. That's what I call the Christmas spirit. Well, as usual, Trump didn't have any of that, and he made an executive order to ban US companies from doing business with Huawei. Kind of screwed for McDuckie. He does have a Scrooge McDuck vibe. <laughs> the ban meant players like Google, Intel, and Qualcomm had to scramble as they reconfigured their deals, business stuff, had meetings, plotted a new trajectory for Q4. What did businesses do? What? Stonks. St stonks. For their part, Huawei said they would accelerate work on their Android alternative, and they've already released a phone with no traces of Google apps. That was so close. I'm leaving it. Parts of the Huawei ban have since been lifted, but relations between the US and China are still pretty frosty. I would say I hope things thaw out come spring, but I don't really trust Huawei either. So I guess we'll just have to leave this one up to old Santa Claus. Cheers. And you're not likely to find a story with more twists in it than the saga of folding phones. Ah! It's not a twist. I expect you to call me out on that. It's like a bend. It's not, 
This is your Christmas gift. Thank you, thank you so much, I appreciate it. A Chinese company called Royol actually showed off the first real folding phone, the FlexPi, at CES last year, and frankly, this year, I guess. Frankly, I don't think anyone was impressed, but that didn't deflate people's interest in the concept. An Intel patent was later unearthed showing a tri-fold design. That's two, two folds actually, but three. It's a pyramid that folds out like a flower. There, exactly. Samsung finally unveiled the Galaxy Fold on February 20th with a price tag of 1,980 US Benjamins, followed quickly by Huawei's reveal of the Mate X, which seemed like a more advanced design with a more advanced price tag to boot. I've never seen one. Me neither. Also, Oppo showed off an extremely similar design, but swore that it wasn't copied. Oh, <laughs> okay, Oppo. In April, the Galaxy Fold got sent out to reviewers who promptly tried to peel off the screen protector and broke their phones because it wasn't a screen protector. No, it, it was just a part of the screen. It was the screen. Don't you hate when that happens? Killed my screen off. Whoops. Between the fake screen protector issue and the phone being vulnerable to dust and debris, there was too much negative press around the Galaxy Fold and Samsung delayed the launch to September. People had much nicer things to say about it then. Meanwhile, we started to see rumors of foldable devices coming from Microsoft, Motorola, even Apple. Well, some of those rumors panned out. As in October, Microsoft unveiled the Surface Duo, a foldable Android phone, and the Surface Neo, a foldable Windows device, both slated for release next year. Although they don't actually have bendy displays. They're laptops? <laughs> so they're laptops. <laughs> it's technically cheating, they're not actually foldable phones, but I'll let it slide. Because... Happy Hanukkah! Yay, something! Crazy Kwanzaa! Wow! And also in October, Motorola took the wraps off their modern Razer, and although the phone looks sick, the specs do not. And it's actually been delayed. I just heard about that today. Wow. Will we get more and better phones in 2020? Probably. <laughs> now it's time for the stocking Christmas- Stocking stuffer. <laughs> That's a, I should have called it that. A genius, call it now. now it's time for the stocking stuffers, brought to you by drop.com. Yeah, you can hope for a great present, or you can just buy what you want right now. Stuff it in your stock. Stick it in there, and Drop wants to help you out. Grab something for yourself or that audio file in your nice list with their deals of the decade. Like the open back HD58X for 130 bucks down from 150, or the Mastrop Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset for just $90 down from 120. You really want to treat yourself? Well, the Mr. Speaker Ether closed headphones, normally $900, are 750 bucks. These deals won't last long, so give yourself some love and check them out at the link below. On to the stocking stuffers. 2019 saw a bunch of companies get delusions of Netflix and pour a ton of effort into making cloud game streaming a mainstream thing. Microsoft started talking big about Project X Cloud, and we even got rumors that Xbox games might be streamable on the Nintendo Switch in the future. Other rumors initially made it seem like Google was developing a game console until they revealed that it wasn't a box. The future of gaming isn't a box, James. Get your, think outside of it. Way outside of it. Wow. <laughs> That's right, it was actually Stadia, a Netflix for games type thing, but wait, you still needed to buy games? That's so. Ah! <laughs> It was as confusing as that light just was. But you, wait, you didn't need the controller? Unless you were playing on TV? It, it was a confusing mess at launch, but thankfully they cleared things up by claiming Stadia would have negative latency. While we were waiting to test that claim, Microsoft and Sony announced a shocking and vague cloud gaming partnership that we have yet to see the fruits of. Now Google's promising many more games, features, and quality improvements for Stadia in 2020, but what the heck is Steam Cloud Gaming? Steamy pile of games. Oh, steaming. 5G technology actually started rolling out in 2019 with Sprint, Verizon, and AT&T using a mix of existing spectrum and new millimeter wave tech to bring super fast wireless speeds to a few dozen cities across the US, provided you're standing in the exact right spot in the middle of the street. AT&T kind of jumped the gun in the early game trying to convince people that its 5G-E network was actually 5G instead of just the rebranded 4G that it definitely was, and they got sued for it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Those rascals, <laughs> come on guys. T-Mobile on the other hand, rolled out what they call a nationwide 5G network, covering 5,000 cities with sub gigahertz, while only six cities got the fancier millimeter wave stuff. There's a pretty short list of phones that can actually use 5G right now, but rich people will be getting more in 2020. 
Facebook didn't have as bad a year as they did in 2018, but there were still enough sketchy security incidents for the company to maintain their reputation as being probably the worst of the Silicon Valley oh, group. Sucker, <laughs> Oh, you're just coming out with these puns today. Friends call them suck. <laughs> call me suck. In April, Facebook was caught asking new users to disclose their passwords for their email accounts, and Mark Zuckerberg actually asked governments to help regulate the company, which is fine, because everybody and their dog is now investigating Facebook for various reasons. In July, Facebook both launched their Libra crypto cryptocurrency and paid a $5 billion fine to the FTC for its security breaches. Facebook- <laughs> <laughs> What a pairing. <laughs> Facebook seems to know now that being the biggest social network in the world comes with some baggage. And if they're gonna survive, they're gonna need to be a bit better at concealing the fact that Mark is actually a reptilian from the planet Data Grab God. That was stupid. <laughs> but he still deserves a mug of hot cocoa just as much as the rest of us, James. That's the festive spirit. Have you seen him drink? <laughs> seen him drink liquids? <laughs> I can't even imagine if they were hot liquids. <laughs> His mouth is burning. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and our last story is the controversial one of the Epic Game Store. It launched last December with Epic pledging to only take a 12% cut from games revenue, leaving an 88% cut for developers. Valve takes a 30% cut by default, with that number going down as a game sells more copies. Epic then started buying up exclusives like they were hoarding for a long winter. And they even bought Psyonix, the developer of Rocket League. Now, this would have been slightly less annoying to the gaming public if EGS had even a fraction of the feature set that Steam has, but after a year, the store is still pretty bare bones. The backlash seems to have died down a bit, and it seems like Epic is playing it safer now. I guess they snagged enough users to meet Tim Sweeney's objective of shaking up the industry. I'm shook. <laughs> we're shook. It might not have been the gift that everyone wanted, but he did also give out a crap load of free games. He's kind of like a incredibly smug, very stubborn Santa Claus. Oh, and I almost forgot, Cybertruck. That happened this year. Remember that? <laughs> ah, it was just like that. <laughs> Best part of 2019, hands down. Well, we could go on talking about our favorite tech moments of 2019 forever, but then I wouldn't have time to dip ginger snaps in my hot cocoa or roast chestnuts so by an open fire. Jesus, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> it's time for a new year. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Keep that in. Keep it? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever roasted chestnuts by an open fire? You ever played with this giant flashlight? Oh. Here, shining in my eyes. It's really fun. Ah, oh, God, that sucks. Oh. I don't like doing. No, that's, that's what, not the Christmas that's what spirit. I put you through. Oh no. Oh. All right, whatever you guys are celebrating this holiday season, happy holidays and jingle bells all the way home. Say hi to Rudolph for me. Season's yeetings. <laughs> <laughs> Shine this up your chimney.